Hi guys, this is Nutrix the Synth Guy and today we're talking about another problem you're going to have to deal with when you're using MIDI. Okay, uh, MIDI is not that young. It's been around since, I don't know, 83. There's MIDI 2.0 coming out very soon, this year, 2021. But still, even MIDI 1.0 will be compatible with a lot of gear that we have today and that we had for mm, the last uh, 30 years. So we still have to deal with MIDI, the good old MIDI. Now, before we go in, into the problem, I want to just go back and explain what MIDI is for those who don't know. I'll start with a basic notion of what MIDI is. If you already know what MIDI is, you can go skip ahead. If you want to know the big picture of what MIDI is, you have to go here somewhere. You're going to have my link to another video I did about the whole MIDI implementation chart. And then I explain mostly, you know, all the messages that MIDI can send. So if you want to go that route, it's here. Now, just to get the basic knowledge is that MIDI is basically, the letter stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. So it's hardware and software uh, and messages, basically, how it can give the options of two compatible devices or software to talk about music information. The simplest way to explain what it is, is what you do when you play an instrument, the type of manipulation you do on it. If you play a keyboard, well, you're gonna press the keys, you're gonna press on the pedal. All of these performance information, it's gonna be described by the computer to another device, which is gonna be the synthesizer, who's gonna play back these performances with a certain sound. So basically MIDI is a bunch of messages describing the performance that the musician is doing. But it can be used for other things. I mean, there's other type of messages you can find in MIDI. You can control live uh, lighting and, and, and show control. There's MIDI sync. There's many different things. But basically that's what MIDI is for. So most people use MIDI for musical instrument and, and you know, synthesizers and beatboxes and, and a computer, of course, is part of the deal. In MIDI, there's three types of physical connection on the back of these devices. You have, let me get me a, 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 a these here, MIDI in and MIDI out. These are the five pin DINs. There's five pins and they're called DIN connectors. The shape of this connector is a DIN connector. And the five pins are actually only I think three are used, the ground and two others, and that's it, the two others are not used. So on the five, there's only three. Nobody cares about that, only technical question. But it means that these, this one is an in, this one is an out. The in can receive into it, and the output can only send outside of this device to the out. Now, this is really important because it means that if you look at this device, this is a synthesizer keyboard, and of course, it's a small one, but this logic applies to any type of hardware you have where you have controllers on it. This is actually two devices. Well, to the point that you can actually, <laughs> look at that. In this case, I can actually I, disconnect them, and I've got two devices. I've got my controller. Well, now it doesn't have a MIDI out, that's a problem. And I've got my generator of sound, my sound generator. And when you buy a synthesizer, I'm gonna reconnect these two together. Uh, when you buy a synthesizer, the company already packaged them you know, the two devices in two one box. You've got the controller and you've got the brain, the sound generator, sound module. But they, they're packaged together so they're not separate. So when you press on the keys, you're sending into the out. And when it receives media information in the input, it goes into the sound generator. It doesn't control the keyboard. There's no logic for that. You're playing the sounds. So, it's really important for the next step when we're going to talk about, uh, talk about the rest of it. So some of them, like this one, has a MIDI in and MIDI out. There's no MIDI through. And that's where you can have a big problem. The through, normally, the way it's built, only is a copy of what's coming in to the in. So it's another copy of the information getting into the device. So nothing that you play from it and it's the through is to send to the next device. So you would have a cascade of synthesizers. You have three synthesizers. 
you have a sequencer controlling three synthesizers, well, you would do a cascade in the classic way of doing it. You would send from the sequencer to the first synth input, the through to the second synth input, the through to the third synth input. Which means that when you play the sequencer, it will control, it will control the three synthesizers. Well, when you play the second, the first synthesizer, nothing's connected to the output. So nobody is getting what this one is playing because you're only playing locally on it. So if you would like to send the note back into the computer, you would need to connect the output into the computer. So you'd have you know, out into the in, through into the in, through into the in, but the one you want to use as a controller to record in your sequencer, the performance would be the output back into this. Now you get a problem because it means that when you play locally on your keyboard, well, you also have the notes coming back from the computer. So you hear it twice. You hear the local control, you're playing the keys as a keyboard, and you send that into the computer. Your sequencer, you activate the monitoring function, so it will send the MIDI back into your synthesizer, and then you're going to play also that sound. So you're going to hear it twice. It's going to be triggered once locally and once through MIDI. So the problem is that it's going to, it sounds bizarre because these two will play at the same time, so you'll use um, faster your voice of polyphony, and it sounds a little bit um, out of phase because you're going to hear the two notes you know, playing twice. So what you'll do for that is you're going to activate the local control off. You can find that in, in a lot of these synthesizers. You have to find somewhere in the menu there's a local control. You look in the manual, you find local control. It means you're going to disconnect the keyboard from the sound module. So these two devices become two separate pieces of hardware. Even they're physically in the same box, and when you press the keys, you will not trigger the internal sound. None. And, then, and when you receive MIDI into the input, it will trigger the internal sound. So that's going to be how it works. So man, then it means that your main keyboard, like my case, my System 8 now, this one, if I put local control off, I can send that message into the MIDI message to my sequencer. And then in my sequencer, I'll decide which of the device will actually receive the note that I'm playing. Some of the device you'll find, like the TR8S, for example, have a MIDI in and MIDI out, no through. But if you look in the manual, it says there's a through in it. You go, well, physically, there's none. There's just like a MIDI out. But if you look in the menus in it, you have a virtual through or a soft through. So what it does, it will copy the incoming signal into the MIDI input into the, th the out as a through and it will come out of the out. For me, this is asking for problems. And by default, it's turned on. So it's just the wrong way to do it in my view. Because for anybody who doesn't know what through is and how it works and, and they just buy stuff to plug it in and it's the first time they use it, it's going to crash at one point. Because the through is a copy of what's coming in. And the, the best example I can give you is that I was helping somebody, because I do these one-on-one -on -one consultation online with, with uh, users, and one of them had a problem syncing all of his gear. He had um, three different groove boxes and beat boxes. And when he played them from his Ableton Live sequencer, some of them would just go bizarre. You know, uh, one would be having these weird tempo, like fast, slow, fast, slow, slow, slow fast. It was like bizarre rhythm. And others would just like stop. Really, everything would just like freeze in time, like, okay, what's wrong with this? And we troubleshoot, and the problem is you get a, a MIDI feedback, and I'll explain how it works. Basically, your sequencer, Ableton Live, for example, is sending the MIDI clock and the start, stop, continue to trigger the tempo and the song in this one. Now, this one receives the information, and you said your uh, through, MIDI through is activated where there's none into the output of the MIDI out. So it will copy that MIDI signal for this, the tempo, the sing, the start, all that rhythm information to have these devices interact correctly. It sends it back into your DAW. And the DAW receives it and also sends it back. So you get these, you get this loop of feedback, you know, and then many things can happen. Your machine can actually crash. 
it doesn't work. You need to turn it off, turn it back on. You disconnect the MIDI out and you see, oh, it starts to work correctly. Okay, you just got rid of the MIDI loop. You know there's a MIDI loop. Or when you stop it and you disconnect the cable, you get like poof, all the notes that was waiting to play now can play. So to get rid of that, you need to go into your sequencer, your beatbox, your, your you know, and be sure that you do not send back the signal received to it. So you want it to be uh, only slave to the master clock, only following the master clock, not resending it. Because if the master clock also receives it, combines it with the original and send it back, you're gonna have these weird problems. So be sure that you look into these sub-menus, the utility menu or the system menu or the MIDI menu. Somewhere in there, you might have a soft through or a copy into through, uh, uh, through into the out. There's many ways to, that they can call it, but what it does this does, I would say, it's not useful unless you do a cascade into the next device, then it's useful. But if you're sending that output back into your sequencer, because sometimes what you do on that piece, you wanna record it, then that output should be an out not a through, so you turn that through off. The only reason you have a through on a device is because you're gonna send the same message to a couple of devices. And anyway, to be sure and to be clear to everybody, if you have more than three devices connected in through, you're gonna have problems because you're gonna have latency every time you're sending to the next one. So the last one will be out of time with the first one. That's a problem. And also you're gonna have errors because these machines are not perfect and the copy and sending to the next one, you're gonna have some weird stuff happening. So after three, it's too much. You should have a MIDI through box, one in, four through, and then you can send this one message to four devices, and they're gonna get it at the same time with the same quality, no problem. So be careful with the through, the virtual through, the soft through, the copy in into through feature that you have in these hardware. And be sure to understand that it's not just for the physical MIDI through, it also exists in the USB MIDI connection. And for example, again, in the TR8S, you can do it using the USB copy of it. So I personally would love to have these to be off but by nature, because when you look at an output, it should be out, not through. And you should turn on, turn on through only if you need it and you know what it does. If not, you're going to have these feedbacks and it's just weird stuff happening. That's it. That's my today tip 101 on uh, MIDI problems. The through can be a deadly problem. <laughs> not a deadly problem, but it can be a very bizarre problem. You try to figure out where it comes from and it's because it's, you have your MIDI feedback. That's it. Stay safe. Make music.